Hey folks, welcome to Play Branson, where you get to know Branson's entertainers better. My name is Chris Meyer, and I'm here with my co-host, Lane Victoria. How are you? I'm doing great. Great to be here again, as yes. always. And you were talking before the show, you got some new cowboy boots. Yes, I did. I was in Nashville a couple weeks ago, and I said, it is one of my life goals to buy some real cowboy boots. And so they have fringe on them, and they make me happy. There you go. Um, so we have a big cowboy entertainer, I call him cowboy entertainer, country star with us today. Yes, we do. We have Billy Yates, um, and he is from Raiding the Country Vault, and he also has his own show. Um, he does. It's called Hit Songwriters in the Round. Yes. And we're going to talk about it, and it's an awesome show. And so you guys are going to have to hang tight for just a moment before you get to hear from Billy. But I'm bringing him back. Uh, questions that make you go hmm or they're just dumb questions okay perfect they're gonna be great for you um, <laughs> okay that was good that okay was good. that was good okay okay <laughs> okay so can you daydream at night that's the question hmm. hmm okay why do they call the little candy bars fun sizes wouldn't it be much more fun to eat a big one you know what? That is an excellent point. There it is. Maybe because you can eat more of them? Could be. So you trick yourself into thinking you're having more and that's more fun. Okay, next question. Are you ready? At a movie theater, which armrest is yours? You know what? The cause of awkward dates since the beginning of movie theaters. <laughs> oh my word. Isn't that, yes. that's like, and it's kind of that way in the airplanes too. Like which armrest is yours? Okay, why, oh, this is a good one. I really like this one. Why is it that we can skate on thin ice and we can then get in hot water? That's, that's a pretty interesting one. That's, that's, a, that's, hmm. Hmm. that's deep. Um, what is a picture of a thousand words worth? Is it a four by six or an eight by 10? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, no, which, which of either these? Either 26 cents or like a buck. Which of these do you think is the dumbest question? Which one? Um, can you daydream at night? You think that's the dumbest one? Okay. I think the candy bar one's kind of dumb too. It, it is. It is. Yeah. Okay, folks. Anyway, that was our dumb Good question. Dumb. Things that make you go, hmm, moment. And so we brought it back. It may not be here every week, but we'll bring it back from time to time because it's just stupid fun stuff. We'll be back in just a moment with Billy Yates. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need iBranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at iBranson.com. Do it all online or call 877-ENTERTAIN. That's 877-368-3782. iBranson.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Play Branson, where you get to know Branson's entertainers better. And today we have a really special guest with us, Billy Yates. Billy, it's good to have you here. Good to be here. How are you, Chris? I'm doing awesome, and thanks for coming uh, in. And Thank I know you. you're getting you're busy, and uh, so we just it's really appreciate crazy. it. It's kind of crazy. It's so, kind of crazy. It's that time of the year. Everybody thinks that when you have the break, that it's like everybody just goes and rests and relaxes, and you do you do get to do a little bit of that. But during the break between the shows, between the seasons, uh, there's a lot that goes into. Uh, preparing for the new season mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. kind of that's the mode I'm in right now so uh, you've been in Branson a couple of years and I want to talk about your shows here in a little bit but there may be people out there that have no idea your history and background and I just think it's fabulous it's awesome and so tell people a little bit about that you know just been very blessed I grew up in uh, southeast Missouri uh, in Donovan mm -hmm. uh, over by Popper Bluff I moved to Nashville in 87 so just over 30 years ago now uh, and so got there, you know, with, uh, with uh, stars in my eyes and, and big dreams and uh, thought that, you know, I was going to be a big star. And I went, I went there to be a singer, uh, of course, like so many do. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it, 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 was a, it was quite a, a difficult road. Uh, the first five years, nothing happened. Mm. Uh, but I sort of stumbled into a songwriting deal uh, with a publishing company, started writing songs and uh, started getting those songs recorded uh, by a lot of different people and uh, just uh, 
uh, it's been amazing. I got to meet a lot of my heroes along the way. Yeah. Got to be great friends with a lot of my heroes, and and I think too, you realize, you know, if you grow up in a small town, uh, like so many of us do, and uh, you you don't even know how to dream that big. Yeah. You really don't. And then the, a lot of the things, the wonderful things that have happened uh, through the songwriting career, even the artist career, uh, has sort of uh, just you know uh, far exceeded my expectations, to be honest. So the first song that you had recorded by somebody else, who who was that? Uh, it was George Jones. George Jones. A song called "I Don't Need Your Rock." That's your first that one. That was the very first one. <laughs> That's pretty yeah. awesome. And I, I know because you, I know you're kind of famous for that. I mean, that's a famous song. Well, you know, I think every songwriter has their songs that, that sort of, uh, that, you know, sort of define who they are as a songwriter or that people relate to them, you know, as, as they, they get to know uh, the songs that they've written. And that has kind of been uh, the one. And it was so cool because, again, you know, uh, it was just such a difficult time trying to get something happening there. And then that all happened. And then it was like, all of a sudden, I realized that the very first song that I had recorded was going to be the song that um, once I realized it was a single and that all these other people came in and sang on it, it was vocal event of the year, all these great things happened around it. And I realized that that was a song that was going to kind of identify and, and, and be, uh, you know, part of who I am. And so uh, uh, it was also, it was like the, you know, for the first time I had done something that I knew uh, would I could just kind of take a deep breath and say, okay, I finally, I've, I've reached this, <laughs> this, this goal. And that opened a lot of doors in Nashville, of course, and uh, uh, made a lot more friends after that, and uh, met a lot of great songwriters and ended up writing many, many songs, thousands of songs yeah. through the years. So thousands of songs. Thousands of songs. That means spending a lot of time in little rooms with no windows trying to think of something, because the way it works in Nashville, of course, is you have uh, big publishing companies, they'll sign songwriters, they have uh, writer rooms that you go mm -hmm. into, and it's it's like a business. So you'll go in like at uh, you know nine o'clock, uh, have some coffee, meet up with your co-writer at ten o'clock, start writing songs, and then you might uh, you might do that again at two o'clock, and sometimes again at six o'clock. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's like you know a three song day, you know, or even even more, or a lot of times less. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't George Jones cut some other songs of yours, or George, at least another one? Yeah, George ended up recording uh, six of my songs. Wow. Uh, Choices was the last song that uh, that uh, of mine that he did, uh, but of the of the six songs, four of those songs were singles that were played on the radio, videos, and all that stuff. Uh, of course, Rocket Chair being the first, Choices being the last. But uh, and Choices, of course, uh, uh, became uh, really his last significant hit uh, because if you remember, that was at the exact same time that George had the the car accident. And, and nearly died, and with tubes down his throat and all this oh, stuff, wow. he was never the same singer kind of after that record. And so, uh, and that was the, the last Grammy that George won. George won wow. a Grammy for uh, his vocal performance on that song. And uh, I think uh, that song meant a lot to him, and uh, that makes me very proud, because wow. he was one of my heroes and wow. one of my friends. Got married in his house. Wow, see, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. See, we learned something new. We learned something new. Now, Billy, you've done some commercial work, some TV commercials. Can you tell us a well, little bit done, about you know, that? When I started doing the songwriting thing, you know, uh, I, I, I was just, a, I was new as a songwriter, and I remember there was a guy named Ron Chancy who came to me and said, uh, would you, uh, could you write some, some jingles for us? And so uh, I ended up, long story short, I ended up doing uh, commercials, riding and singing commercials for Chevy truck, Ford truck, Kellogg Slick 50, Budweiser, uh, was on and on, a bunch, you know. And that was all through the early 90s. And uh, that was pretty cool because I'll never forget, you know, the very first one was Chevy truck. And uh, Rocket Chair had been recorded about that time. Now, mind you, prior to all that, I was like rolling pennies to go to Crystal's for, you know, something to eat. It was like, it was hard times. And, uh, and I remember going to the mailbox thinking, oh, I was waiting for that check on Rockin' Chair. And I finally went out to the mailbox and there it was, and it was a good size. I was like, yes, finally. And like the next day I went and there was a, a check there for the commercial and it was more. <laughs> and so all, it was like win the lottery. All of a sudden, you know, oh, oh, hillbilly Yates is done. Wow, you know, yeah. it was. <laughs> so it was such a blessing. And, and I think, you know, if you it, it, the the lesson, the takeaway from that is, if you stay with it long enough, you know, um, uh, good things can can come. And so, you know, I knew a lot of guys and girls in Nashville who, who, uh, who 
tried, 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 left town, gave up. And I always thought, you know, their big break might have been the next day. Garth Brooks left town. He came the first time. And I knew Garth, you know, when he was there trying, he gave up, went back to Oklahoma and decided to give it another go and came back and... The rest is history. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Now, not only are you a songwriter, but you're a performer in your own right, and you've had your own CDs and albums, whatever you want to call them, yeah, out, yeah. and you had some chart hits then as well, Did, right? you know, uh, and like I said, that's what I moved to Nashville to do, was to be a singer, and so I had different record deals, uh, uh, several major deals, and it was, it was really... Uh, challenging one wouldn't work out and then I'd have to kind of like you know convince somebody that I was worthy of another one and you go through that whole process and uh, uh, but in 97 we had a top 20 record on a song called Flowers and uh, and that was really cool then that company closed <laughs> of course and then that's the way it goes and then uh, I got signed at Sony after that and that went nowhere and then I started my own label uh, I left Sony, asked out of the deal, and went and started my own record label and started marketing and promoting records in Europe. And so then for the next 15 years after that, and actually just prior to my move uh, to Branson, mm -hmm. even since I've been in Branson, I've been still touring some over there. Uh, but we'd go over and do the big festivals and that kind of thing. It's so cool, you know. And, and again, that's one of those things that as a, a, a young kid growing up in southeast Missouri, you don't, you never dream of seeing other countries, you know, much less working yeah. there and getting make, to make friends. And, and uh, yeah. so it's just wonderful. Are yeah. Europeans country music fans? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> and you'd be surprised, you know, because they have a lot of big country music festivals. And, and, uh, and so people come out in droves. We'll do shows in, in Eastern Europe, Lithuania, there'll be 40,000 people. Wow. You know, yeah. so it's really amazing. Yeah. Folks, we're going to stop and we'll be back in just a moment with more from Billy Yates. Rating the Country Vault. Branson's newest production brings in top country music talent to take audiences on a journey through the greatest hits of country music, America's most beloved genre. This all-star cast has performed at the Grand Ole Opry, had hit songs grace the country charts, and toured with some of country music's most iconic entertainers. See the show everyone's talking about. Rating the Country Vault in Branson, Missouri. Hey folks, welcome back to Play Branson. Today we are with Billy Yates, and I've got I've got to tell two stories about you. Uh oh. And and they're both they're both they're both really good. And and this this last summer, um, we were doing an event out at Dogwood Canyon, and uh, uh, we had tour operators and travel agents, just a lot of industry people in town. And we thought, you know, who better to have than you out there? Because you know, kind of kind of the country setting, and uh, and so. We had all these operators, we had this kind of barbecue spread, and so Billy comes out uh, with his guitar, and they already had a, they had a, uh, uh, a mic and everything set up, uh, or they had the mic there, but they didn't have the mic stand. And right. so you had brought your own mic stand, and so um, we go, he goes to put the mic in the mic stand, and it would not fit. The clip was different. The it clip, fit. yeah. It was like, oh. And so literally, I go up on stage, and I am, I'm having to hold, I mean, there's only one mic. We're out in the middle of kind of nowhere. And so I'm literally having to hold the mic for him, which was very awkward. Um, but, but this guy out in the audience, he's like, he brings up a napkin. And so we're trying to tie the, the, the microphone to the, to the stand. And then he finds some rubber bands. And so I was able to get off stage. But, but you know what? He never missed a beat in the whole thing. And, you know, that's part of just entertaining. You've got to swing with I think, it. I think it adds yeah. to, the, to, the, to the overall experience for everybody, you know, to see this guy come up out of the audience and MacGyver this. At first, you know, it's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna like hold the mic. Okay, yeah, awkward. <laughs> Hey, we're yeah. gonna, we, but we could do it. Yeah. We could do it. It's gonna work. And then this guy comes up out of the audience, and MacGyver's, you know, it yeah. worked. And we, did, we had a great time. So, and then, of course, everybody <laughs> just loved loved your performance. And that's one of the things is you're really you're a master storyteller. And yeah. a lot of times you're telling the stories behind the songs, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But then, in I think it was November or December, I was out on. Um, uh, 76 and Shepherd of the Hills Expressway and there had been some wind and I was actually working on a banner trying to either take it up, put it down or 
put it up, whatever. And who stops to help me but Billy? He's like, <laughs> like coming to stop and help me. And I, I just really appreciate that. He didn't have to do that. I'm not, I don't know that he knew it was me there. But I anyway, did. you I did, did know. I did. And I saw, but the wind was like crazy. Yeah. It's so a, you're fighting with this thing. And I saw it. I was like, oh, he needs help. So I swung in. And it's yeah. Like, and so I, I just, yeah. those were a couple of great yeah, stories. And, um, and anyway, so. That shows who you are. Well, yeah. I like to keep it real. And, I, you know, I just think that, you know, as a, as a, as a performer or whatever, I think if you ever get above in who you are, and and I just think it's wrong. And yeah. I just think, you know, my, my whole thing is, you know, God gave me this gift, and it's my duty and my responsibility to share that with people, and and to uh, and that that's all it is. It's not so. I'm not better. I'm not, you know, whatever I've accomplished, whatever that is. I'm blessed. I'm grateful. But you know, I'm just here to 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 uh, to help help other people. You know, yeah. and so. And that beautiful quality really does come through on stage. I've watched you perform and well, that joy just really comes through and it makes a big difference and endears your audience well, to you. Thank you. So, thank you which leads that. me to ask about your shows this year. So, yeah. can you tell us a little about what people really, can expect? Really, really excited. You know, we, uh, the Raiding right the Country Vault is a show that does, actually the show that brought me to Branson. Uh, so, we've been on three seasons. Our first season, we were at the Mansion Theater. The last two seasons, we were at the Starlight Theater. That's not a theater anymore, so we have to move. So we're going to the Americana Theater. Yep. Uh, we start that up um, April 11th. And uh, so really excited because it's uh, always exciting when you make a move because there's, it's, there's, it's, there's a real challenge to uh, mm -hmm. get it to all look the same and get the set moved in and all that stuff. And so very involved in that side of it too. So uh, I come in early before the season starts and, and I start working on all that stuff. And uh, we have all the same cast coming back this year. Uh, and a lot of people, that, a lot of the locals or a lot of people that have become fans of the show uh, have become fans of these individuals that we have in the show. Mm -hmm. And so really excited to say that everybody's coming back. And, and, uh, uh, and then also uh, that show will run through uh, mid-December where we, uh, we're at the end of the season, we pick up some Christmas songs. We add Christmas songs to the show mm -hmm. and uh, we do that. So just looking forward to a great season. Uh, here in Branson with that show. Yeah, people yeah. rave about the Raiding the Country Vault show, and you have a show of your own as well. Well, you know, I was, I was talking about the songwriting thing, and I got here and, uh, of course, have fallen in love with Branson. Uh, the one thing I missed the most about uh, Nashville was my songwriting buddies. And so I started up a show called Billy Eight's Hit Songwriters in the Round. That's also at the Americana Theater. And uh, that show is really unique because we bring in every week, I have two different hit songwriters. Now we're talking some Hall of Famers, I mean big time songwriters. I mean this year I have Buddy Cannon coming in. Buddy uh, produces Kenny Chesney, Willie Nelson, Honor and Reba, wow. everybody has also written songs for all those people, big songs uh, like Set Em Up Joe and On and On. But big songwriters come in, two different ones every week. They perform three shows. I host the show. Uh, we have a really cool looking set that I built last winter. And, uh, and so uh, it's just a lot of fun. It's so laid back, it's so unscripted, and uh, people just walk away. You can go to that show and expect to laugh. You're gonna laugh. You're probably gonna cry too because there's some really compelling stories behind those songs. Mm -hmm. So these songwriters, yeah. they perform the songs they've written and share with the audience the stories that inspired those songs. So it's a very inspiring show. That's really one of a kind in Branson. That's well, really special. And, and the, the, the nice thing about it is people can keep going back and they're not going to see the same show. Mm -hmm. And I went and saw it. I loved it. Uh, you know, the, combining that storytelling with the actual song, um, it was, I'd call it organic, and it, and it was unscripted, but it was, it was professional and done excellent. Well, these you know? guys and girls know what they're doing. I mean, for yeah. one thing, these songwriter shows have been, uh, have become kind of historic in Nashville. We've been doing those shows, uh, like at the Bluebird Cafe or different venues in Nashville for the last several years, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we also have a video piece that uh, we show before the show, and it's got Bill Anderson, uh, Vince Gill, uh, Jimmy Fortune, Tanya Tucker, Chris Young, talking about, they referenced the show, they referenced my career, they referenced, but they, more than anything, it's about the songs and the songwriters mm -hmm. and the importance of, of songwriters. Because the thing is, most people, when you listen to the radio, you think, you know, you assume that that artist wrote that song. Mm -hmm. More times than not, they didn't. And there was somebody yeah. that sat in one of those little rooms with no windows and uh, came up with that song. So let, let's talk about times. Do we, tell us about times for both the shows. So Country Vault, we are, uh, we're Monday, 
Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and uh, that show is a 7.30 show. Okay. In the fall, we'll pick up some Wednesday morning shows, some 10 a.m. shows. That's new for us with the show. Uh, so that's exciting uh, to have to get out of bed really early. It's, I'm <laughs> excited. <laughs> Can't wait. Warm up your voice a little early. And uh, so uh, that'll run, you know, like I said, all the way through mid-December. Yeah. Then also uh, the songwriter show, what we're doing is something kind of cool because we're going to kind of combine the two shows because they're both at the Americana Theater this year. So you'll be able to come on a Friday, Saturday night. We do this, the songwriter show is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, on Friday and Saturday night, you'll, you can go see Country Vault at 7.30. If you stick around, that show ends about 9, 9, 10. At 9.30, we've rolled out the set and we bring the songwriters out on yeah. stage. So you could do so, you could do a double feature, so yeah, to say, or yeah. back to back you if can, you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can pick and choose, or you can come see them all. And uh, yeah. and and what's really cool is you see the big production with Country Vault, uh, and then uh, and it's an all star cast. I mean, everybody in that show. We have Heath Wright from the band Ricochet. We have Eric Heatherly, who uh, has had his own huge career. Uh, Flowers on the Wall was one of his big hits. Um, Michelle Poe's in the show. She plays bass for Hank Jr. So it's that kind of thing, but big production. And then you see it all stripped down, and you are very likely to see and meet the actual songwriter who wrote the song you just saw at the big mm. production show. Yeah. You know, so we're bringing those type of songwriters over because we're doing iconic songs in Country yeah. Vault, mm -hmm. and then the songwriter show, we're bringing iconic songwriters to the show. Yeah. So folks, here's the deal. If you like country music, and even if you don't, I say still go see these shows because they're awesome shows. Um, you're going to enjoy them. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, Billy, it is always great to have you here. And, and you're just a great addition to this community. And, and I know you're, you're working hard on the music scene. And we just, we just want to say thank you. And we appreciate you Well, I so love much. it here. I love the people here. This town has embraced me. You know, I came in uh, hopefully with the right heart and the right attitude. And, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's a great place to be. And I plan to be here a long time. There you go. You heard it here first. He's going to be here a long time. Let's keep, <laughs> keep those seats filled and keep people coming. Folks, we'll be back in just a minute. Folks, welcome back to Play Branson, where you just heard Billy Yates and got to learn more about him. What a really an, an icon, but so humble as oh, yeah. well yeah. and so full of joy. So really a joy to have him. It, it is great to have him here. And he's bringing in a lot of other entertainers and songwriters to town. And so that's that's always good. Um, and so if you haven't seen his show, whether it's Raiding the Country Vault or his songwriter show, Billy Yates hit songwriters in the round. Go check it out. It'll be at the Americana Theater this year on West Highway 76. If you're not familiar where, where that is, it's almost right across from the Presley's Jubilee. A um, couple things I do want to talk about is we have some new restaurants in Branson. And so Landshark, now at the landing, have you been there yet? I haven't. Have yeah. you been there? I have been in it. Uh, I went down there for their grand opening, ribbon cutting. I haven't eaten there yet, but I plan to. But it's really cool. It's got that ve beach vibe, uh, kind of the whole margarita. Ritaville, and it's right by the fountains. They've got a huge patio out there. So that is new in Branson uh, this year. Landshark. Paula Deans is also coming with her own restaurant. That'll be open soon. And Star Bar, uh, I don't know if you've been to the Star Bar, and it's actually a grill, Star Bar and Grill, out on Highway 165. Um, okay. That's a new place. Uh, went out there and toured that the other day. It looks really nice. We had some great food out there. Uh, so not quite, uh, it's almost kind of right in front of the uh, Diamond Resorts on the left. Uh, and so it's a little hard to see, but go check it out. And then we also have Mellow Mushroom coming to the landing. So I only like my mushrooms mellow. You, you only like them. I don't really like mushrooms, but here's the deal. It's not either, about mushrooms. <laughs> I've eaten at lots of Mellow Mushrooms and it's about pizza. They have pizza. Okay. Um, and so do. that's opening here soon at the Branson Landing as well. Um, Praise Fest at the Mansion begins tonight and it goes through Saturday morning here on uh, March 14th and 15th. And then on Saturday night, we also have Guy Penrod. He'll be here in town. 
and Silver Dollar City is now open as well folks so if you haven't been out there check that out and then every once in a while I've just got to do self-promotion we have our new Play Branson magazine uh, it's out so pick this up anywhere around Branson that you find it it is free and has lots of great information in it about shows and attractions so check out the Play Branson magazine and we appreciate all those people that help support that now next week I'm, I'm really excited. I'm always excited about every show, but this this has been a hard show to get done. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. R.P. Harrell is going to be here. And so and he has quite a history, so I'm excited to hear oh from him. Oh my gosh, it's going to be awesome. I can't wait. Uh, so come back next Thursday. Uh, check us out. And if you need help planning your Branson vacation, go to ibranson.com where you can buy shows, attractions, hotels, or you can call one eight seven seven. Do you know it? No. <laughs> one eight seven seven entertain. Remember that for next time. Uh, one eight seven seven entertain. Those people can help plan your number. entire Branson vacation. And once again, like us on Facebook. You can go to facebook.com forward slash ibranson and tell us who you'd like to see on the show. And if there's something you don't like, let us know. We're also accepting resumes for bachelors for Lane. Oh. Over and out.